In training, everyone focuses on 90% physical and 10% mental, but in the races, there's very little that separates us physically at the elite level, so it's really 90% mental. This quote, um, it reflects the significance of the psychological aspect of the swim. This is a unique sport that incorporates all of your body's muscles, and it's both aerobic and anaerobic. <laughs> Anyways, um, as most of you know, I am a competitive swimmer, and I've been swimming competitively at the regional, uh, at the regional junior Olympic level for the past couple of years. Uh, by learning more about this culture, you'll have a better understanding of why it requires a strong physicality and mental toughness, and therefore have a better appreciation for this sport. Today, uh, first, I will discuss the characteristics of this culture, the psychological component of it, and my identification with this culture. So, sw swimming is a very unique sport that's unlike many others for several reasons. It is uh, it, because of its events, traditions, and also the way it functions. Competitive swimming includes racing in pools and also open water, the latter, which is usually long distance events held in oceans or lakes. As swimmers, we share many traditions, such as applying sheep fat onto each other's bodies before an open water race. Uh, uh, open water race. Uh, my coach brings a big jar of what looks like a super oily version of Vaseline, and then you apply it along the edges of your suit to avoid chafing, and also a thick layer around the ankles, because a lot of times, swimmers will grab your ankle and then pull your foot down to propel them forward, but then they quickly regret that if they touch that gross fat. So it's a really good tactic. Um, also, swimming is both an individual and a team sport. It's an individual sport because ultimately you swim your own races. But it's a team sport because as teammates and friends, you help one another in practice with intervals and also uh, with supporting each other at swim meets. Uh, uh, most of the teams in this culture, they have a cheer that they might say after practice or before a meet to create a sense of unity and to intimidate other swimmers. Next, the mental aspect is super important in the swimming community. Uh, the, uh, the visualization and belief are the two main keys to success. Like Graham said, how, me how mentally prepared you are for a race is way more important than how much you practice because everyone can practice, but it's who's more mentally ready for it that determines who wins. Some uh, co common things that swimmers do as the more advanced that they get is to uh, visualize different parts of the stroke or event, such as head position and tempo, and also to believe that they can get faster and also to reach their goals. Uh, commonly, people will spend three to four minutes before a practice, you know, practice uh, visualizing what they need to work on and how they're going to get there. So now that I've told you a little bit about the the characteristics of this culture and the mental component of it, let me share with you how I was first introduced and how I am connected to this culture. So, uh, swimming has, re uh, has uh, grown to become an important part of my identity. I must admit, I did not like it at first, but once I learned how to actually move forward and not drown, then I realized that I enjoyed the sport, and especially because I loved the way that it made me feel. Uh, how happy I was after practice, the rush of adrenaline you get as you step onto the blocks, and also the feeling like, uh, the feeling that you can fly as you recover your stroke from butterfly, which is why I like that sport, it's my favorite. Um, also, swimming, although it's a competitive sport, we are actually all friends and teammates of a wide community, larger than just my own current team. Uh, I know people from Santa Barbara to New York because of swim. You also develop a close relationship with both your coaches and your fellow swimmers. In this uh, culture, I have the second family with whom train hard and support me for, for who I am and also this sport. I, um, in, this, in this community, we're all one big family and our passion and dedication to the sport is what connects us all. Also, swim, it's not just a sport for me, it's a way of life. I've put my blood and sweat into perfecting my technique and practicing over and over again to make every movement count. Because that minuscule fraction of a second is the difference between winning and losing in the Olympics. Lastly, swimming has taught me that I can accomplish anything through determination and, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, 
And this brings me to the end of my speech today. I hope you've gained a better understanding of what the swim culture is. Today we discussed the characteristics of the swim community, the, the mental component, and also my identification with this culture. In Finding Nemo, Dory once said, when life gets you down, do you know what you've got to do? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. So I'd like to extend an invitation to each of you to share this passion of mine and to jump into the water and start swimming. Thank <laughs> you.